You guys, <laughs> it's hot. It's, it's a hot one. It's been a really hot one. And New York City is no exception. In fact, New York City, the concrete jungle, can be really boiling in the summer and it can be really hard to know what to do when everywhere you turn, the city's trying to kill you by bouncing heat off of its many buildings back onto you. So in this video, I'm gonna break down some things that we have been doing and some things that you also can do in New York City to kind of beat the heat, have a good time, even though the city is freaking boiling. But before I get into that, I'm gonna reintroduce myself. My name's Mackenzie. This is my channel, Think Too Much. On this channel, I explore figuring life out in my late 20s because that's what I'm doing. And I explore that while living in New York City, which includes doing things in New York City, hence this video. So if that is of interest to you, feel free to like and subscribe. Okay, taking today's video off with what feels like an impossible task in New York City, which was finding a pool. Me and Max recently found a pool that we could like hang out by and swim in, which is genuinely the first time I have ever been able to use a pool in New York City or find a pool that I can use in New York City. Granted, I haven't tried that hard in the past, but it is hard, like it's not that easy. I should say that there are public pools that are available and I think they've either always been free or they are free this summer. There, I read something to that effect. It's like a bit of insight to kind of save for later if you need and if you want like a free option. What we found was not free. We actually found it on an app called Resort Pass, which I think is a newer app. And essentially it connects you to a bunch of hotels and or like kind of commercial pools, like resorts. It's possible that Resort Pass offers like other amenities other than just pools, but we were just using it for pools. And it connects you to all of these hotels that like offer to sell you a day pass to their pool because they will sell you a day pass for, I think it's like ranges from, I don't know, probably like a hundred to 200, probably more for really ritzy places, but whatever. So we were looking online and the thing about New York City is it can be really hard to know what like cool things are on offer that aren't also like just super overcrowded and like slammed with people. The pool that we found on Resort Pass, and I'm sure a lot of others because I don't think this is like a super used platform yet, was really great. It wasn't too crowded. We were at a hotel in Midtown and I think it's possible that like being in Midtown where like, you know, locals don't really wanna go and that's like not very sceny, kind of contributed to why this pool wasn't that popular or wasn't that populated. I think it genuinely just seemed like it was mostly people who were staying at the hotel. And we could have gone someplace like Chelsea, which would have been maybe a little bit easier for us. But the thing about Chelsea is Chelsea tends to be a little bit sceny. Those hotel passes were like a little bit more expensive. So we figured, you know what, fuck it. We'll go to Times Square, <laughs> we'll find a pool. Surely no one on TikTok or Instagram will want to go to this thing because it's in Times Square. I'm not sure if that logic checks out, but it did work out. We had a great time. I think it was in like the 100 to 130 range for both of us. So it wasn't cheap. And like I said, there are free pools on offer throughout New York City. But if you want kind of like a resort experience for not the cost of a room at a resort and access to the pool and other amenities, like there was a bar, there was like a waitress who was like serving the poolside area. Like there were multiple restaurants within the hotel. So it was like very easy, it was very accessible. They give you a towel. So if you want just kind of like to spend a little bit extra money to have like a more convenient pool experience, we had a really great experience with this and Resort Pass was super easy to use. We're definitely having access to the pool. The pool's pretty cool. The views from the pool were pretty cool because it was kind of high up, so that was nice. Accessible to food, easy enough to get to. The pool wasn't too crowded, which was amazing. The opposite of what we were expecting. And it was really nice to have pool staff waitressing so we could just like have a drink by a pool, which is just not something we ever get to do. Cons would probably be like, the pool wasn't that big, which makes sense because it's a pool in a hotel in Midtown. The food wasn't that good, which we're, we're not at all surprised by. The best food is in New York City, but it's not at New York City's like middle tier resorts. <laughs> 
And the last con, and this isn't really a con for us, but it might be for you, is it wasn't that scene. It wasn't like a glamorous place where we were filled with like glamorous people and like multiple opportunities for like Instagram cameos. It was just like a nice pool with a cool view and like a random area in Times Square with food that was like accessible, albeit not amazing, and it wasn't too crowded. So we had a great time. I would totally go back again. This is like definitely something I'm keeping in my back pocket in the future. Probably will do again before the summer ends. Okay, and the next suggestion I have for you is not, it's not like the hardest to come by. It's not the most innovative suggestion. It's literally just walking around New York. <laughs> Which like, yes, when the city is an oven is not the most pleasant thing, but you can do it in a way that kind of spares you the discomfort of the kind of constant heat and like being outdoors in the heat. The trick to doing this is going to like a really kind of densely packed part of New York. So like lots of parts of Manhattan are really conducive to this because you want to go essentially to a space that has a lot of shops that you are interested in stopping into because the shops will have AC and that'll be kind of like a constant break from the heat if that makes sense. So like at most you're walking for like 10 to 15 minutes to like whatever the destination is from the train, whatever. And then you're just kind of like popping into and out of shops. And that's kind of how you're staying cool. Or like you're popping into a cafe to get like a refreshing drink, et cetera, et cetera. Walking around New York, like walking around Manhattan specifically has always been like one of my favorite pastimes. Like we also love exploring Brooklyn and we've done a lot of that, but we live in Manhattan specifically. And we just love, I think how kind of densely packed in it is. It's just like everything you could want is like on the same block. And I think for a lot of people that's overwhelming, but for me and Max, it's like really fun and stimulating. So one of our favorite things to do is to kind of walk around and just like take in all of the like interesting spaces that New York City has to offer because there are lots of like really cool shops and boutiques and cafes and like amazing food places, amazing bars that are just like on the next block. And it's just like one of the funnest ways to spend time in the city. And I really think like it's part of how we kind of take advantage of what New York City has to offer because what New York City has to offer is a ton of kind of diverse, interesting experiences and shopping in a way that you don't necessarily have access to elsewhere, like eating in a way that you don't have access to elsewhere, like drinking in a way, all of these things. So in like more comfortable weather, it's definitely like interesting to find the more like outer pockets of the city, which tend to be like little cultural pockets. That's like genuinely one of the coolest things New York City has to offer. It's just kind of far away from us. And in the summer, when we don't want to spend a ton of time walking outside, it's like genuinely pretty comfortable to go to a place like Soho or like the East Village or the Lower East Side to just kind of pop into and out of like weird quirky shops. <laughs> I guess the last thing I'll say about like this activity is like one of the kind of quieter pluses of walking around a Manhattan neighborhood and like shopping, popping into and out of shops is like just like kind of the views you have all around you. It's like you look up an avenue and you see like all these like amazing kind of gorgeous high rises in like the landscape and that's just it's a really i think it's like one of the quieter i guess luxuries of kind of having access to these really cool neighborhoods and the walkability that you have everywhere Obviously this is something we really like doing. It's something I totally recommend anyone do in New York City at any time. Just in the summer, you need to be a little bit more mindful of like where you're doing it, how you're doing it, so you don't overheat. But in terms of like top recommendations, one of the places we went to was this Riverside Bar. I forget what it's called, but it's on the Hudson. It's right by Pier 40 and it's been there for a minute, but I've genuinely, I've never gone. I think I've gotten like water from them, but I've never gotten a drink from them. So we went, we got mocktails and that was like a great little experience. It was a little hot for that. I'm not gonna lie to you, but there are, you do have access to like on the piers like nature and shade so like I think the Hudson River Park in particular is like really kind of smartly laid out in a way that is meant to be conducive to really hot weather 
And in the summer, and this isn't always the case, you can catch a breeze by the river because like bodies of water tend to be breezier. That was not the case this day. So we opted for a cute little mocktail at this little riverside bar instead. And it was great. And in terms of neighborhoods that are really great to kind of explore, Upper West Side, we've always loved. It's a little hard for us to get to, but we love it. So always recommend that one. The park on the Hudson on the Upper West Side is literally called Riverside Park. I love that park so much. So definitely recommend that. I would recommend you avoid Midtown because that's the most like concretey jungle of the concretey jungleness of Manhattan. And it's just like, there's not much to see. It's a lot of like food meant for kind of lunch commuters, whatever. Chelsea's a lot of fun. The West Village is beautiful. Greenwich Village is really interesting. East Village is a lot of fun. Lower East Side. All of the like smaller little kind of pocket neighborhoods that are like slightly more residential, I would definitely recommend. Soho, it's like, we go to Soho, Soho's fun. I would probably target Nolita more than a Soho. Soho can be like really, really crowded on a weekend. If you can hit Soho like on a weekday, that's the best time because it won't be overwhelming and you can actually like appreciate like how pretty the architecture is down there because it's really pretty. Chinatown's really cool. Little Italy. Anyway, this, those are like the places we explore a lot and we do a lot of exploring. That's like one of our main hobbies, I guess, in New York. <laughs> so that's gonna be it for this video. I was gonna do a third recommendation for a beach, but we never actually made it to the beach. We were gonna go last weekend, but then we had to do wedding planning stuff. Our friends went to Jones Beach. We weren't able to join them. They seemed to have a good time. I will let you know that it was like an hour and a half to get to for us. So, and that's kind of the case with like most New York City beaches. They're not like readily accessible, which is a bummer, but you know, at least you have access to a beach. So yeah, you can try that out at your own risk. I also really like Sandy Hook Beach. I like it accessible from a ferry. I'd be lying to you if I said that any of the New York City beaches are particularly magnificent. As a Californian, I have very high standards, but sometimes you just need a beach day. And it is nice because like, there's a ton of beaches that are accessible via public transit in New York City. So definitely check those out. And yeah, otherwise I just kind of recommend trying out the more like hot weather friendly ways of like exploring New York City because New York City is so much fun to explore. That's like one of our favorite pastimes and checking out Resort Pass if you want to have a pool day because we really enjoyed it and it was not nearly as crowded as we thought. And I will also say that like those day passes for the pools sell out. So I think it's super possible that the hotels are being mindful of the crowds, which is just not the case. With like every New York City activity, like there are bars that like will sell tickets and they'll sell out, but the, the bars will be jam packed if they're having an event that's ticketed. The pools were not like that. So kind of take that as you will. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Like I said, my channel, Think Too Much, is all about life in your late 20s figuring shit out, whether that's what to do on the weekend in New York City or what you're feeling. So it's a range. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>